you know, maintenance and all that kind of stuff of the factory, then uh, that type of thing we can't apply to a specific job as well necessarily. And therefore, we're going to put it just into this big bucket of overhead and apply it out to the jobs based on the predetermined rate. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program. But that's actually good for you. Because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor, which I think is ideal for what I do, which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. So that's what's happening here. Once again, we're basically paying payroll and you might have in your head, well, we should be debiting payroll expense when that happens. And we're not debiting payroll expense because the per people who did work uh, have not helped us generate revenue yet. They helped us generate the asset of inventory. And more specifically, we're gonna put it into the factory overhead. So we're gonna put it into factory overhead. It's already been applied out in this problem to work in process. That's why we have a, a credit balance here. So uh, we're going to debit factory overhead, which has already basically been applied out. So we're going to copy the factory overhead. We're going to put it in C16, right click and paste it one, two, three. All right. So we're going to make this a bit smaller. I'm going to scroll down to 80. I'm going to scroll over here a bit so we can see more of our general ledger. Here's the factory overhead that we're going to post it to. Here's where the factory overhead is. That's almost the third to last asset. So here's the factory overhead on the... Uh, that's not factory. Factory overhead's down here. Here's factory overhead on the general ledger in U26. So U26 equals, we're going to point to that 14,000. And so you can see a little bit more of that and enter. And now the, the, we basically have over applied it at this case. Now it's back to 98. What's happening here is it looks like we've applied out way more to the job than the cost that we have had yet. But that could happen because what we haven't yet got through the month yet. So we've applied it out before we actually incurred the cost in this case. Okay, so then we're going to go to the second half, which is cash. So here's cash. Here's cash on the trial balance. Here's cash on the general ledger. We are in the credit side. So we are in R, uh, we are in R10 equals point to that 14. That's going to bring cash down and put us back in balance. Notice that we posted to the factory overhead. We do not need to do anything with the job cost sheet in that case because we don't do anything with the job cost sheet until we allocate it from factory overhead to the work in process, which we had already done for overhead, which is that 109. All right, I'm going to make this larger again, make back up to 100% on the taskbar. Scrolling back over to the left, we are now on 130, which says that amounts apply to factory overhead. So here's the, all the other stuff that basically is we're paying for, but we don't know which job to post it to. We're going to take this one item at a time. So the first one is indirect materials. So indirect materials, are, is cash affected? No, uh, all we're doing is transferring the uh, raw materials to, in this case, not work in process, but to overhead. Reason being, these are going to be materials that we couldn't apply directly to a job, such as like glue or something like that, or if it was grout in a construction job, things that it would be too tedious for us to try to apply that out to the job, even though we do want to, we would be too tedious to apply it out directly to the job. I don't know how much glue we used to make the job because we didn't count the glue because it would take too much time and money to do so. So we're just going to dump it into the overhead account and then apply it out using the predetermined rate. 
So if this account's going to go down the raw materials. It has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down with a credit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it in the credit by going under the date, right click and paste one, two, three. Uh, also note that some problems might have two raw material accounts, meaning one for direct raw materials, one for indirect raw materials. Some may not. So just be careful on, depends on what type of problem you're looking at. And that's going to be a credit of 30,000. Then we're going to debit something for 30,000. And all the debits for these ones are going to go into the factory overhead. So these are the things that we couldn't apply to the job. Factory overhead is overdrawn right now. So it's really kind of an asset. It, you sh it should have a debit balance until we apply it out. But we've already applied it out. That's why it has a credit balance. So we're going to copy the factory overhead. We're going to put that on top, right click and paste one, two, three. Okay, let's make this a bit smaller and post it out and do these one at a time. So we're going to post this to the general ledger. I'm going to scroll over a bit so we can see more of the information. So we're going to post the factory overhead, which is here. Here's factory overhead on the trial balance and factory overhead on the general ledger. So we're going to debit factory overhead in U27. So U27 equals, I'm going to point to the debit of 30,000, bringing the balance uh, back towards the debit. So it's a credit. It's going, it's going towards the debit of 65. It's still overdrawn. We got the raw materials here. So here's the raw materials on the journal entry. Here's the raw materials on the trial balance. Third account. Here's the raw materials on the general ledger. And we are in Q25 equals. We're going to point to that. Whoop, I'm in the wrong side here. Should be in the credit side. I'm in R25 equals. We're going to point to that 30,000. This is a debit, that's a credit, those are opposites. This will go down. Puts us back in balance over here. We're gonna make this larger again. Scroll over and see what we have next. So we've got uh, factory utilities. Okay, I'm gonna assume we paid the utilities with cash. So, and, and again, some problems will try to say that we didn't pay with cash, we got a utilities payable, but uh, I'm just gonna say, and the reason they do that is because they want to show you uh, in the journal entry that it's for utilities and you can't see that if we paid cash. So let me show you what I'm talking about there. But in this problem, I'm going to assume we paid cash. So cash for utilities, cash has a debit. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy the cash. I'm going to skip a line and I'm going to skip another line to put it on the bottom. The credit's going to go on the bottom and the credit is going to be for that 12,000. I'm going to represent the credit with a negative 12,000. We're going to debit something for 12,000. And, and again, a lot of people are going to say, well, it's utilities. I should debit utilities expense if we paid for utilities. But remember that, uh, the utilities expense is on the warehouse in this case or in the factory. Therefore, it needs to go into the, uh, asset, but we don't know which job to apply it to. So we can't put it into work in process. Therefore, we're going to put it into the factory overhead. So I'm going to copy the factory overhead. That's going to be the debit right click in. Uh, C22, paste it, one, two, three. Then I'm going to make this small again, or smaller, down to 80 on the taskbar. We're going to scroll over. We're going to post factory overhead again. So here's factory overhead. Here it is on the trial balance. And here it is on the general ledger. We are in U28 equals. Going to point to that 12,000. And once again, we're, we're less overdrawn here now because <laughs> we already applied it out at the 109. So now we're at the cash. So here's the cash. Here's the cash on the trial balance. Here's the cash on the general ledger. We're going to post it in uh, Q, Q11 equals, and we're going to point to that 12,000 and enter. All right, so we have that one. I'm going to make it larger again, back up to 100, scroll back over, and we're out of room. Therefore, we're going to have to unhide over here. So remember, we hid some cells at the beginning where we have A, B, C, D, uh, F, L, and you know there's some hidden cells there. So we're going to highlight, I'm going to put my cursor on E so we can see the drop down, left click, drag over to L, let go, right click on the selected area, and unhide. So we're going to unhide those cells. So there we have those. Then we could hide these cells. Now I don't need these cells, so we could hide B to F now, and they'll still be there. Do not delete them, <laughs> but we're just going to hide them. I'm going to put my cursor on uh, B, scroll over to F, let go right click on selected area and hide okay so we had just recorded the utilities now we're going to record the factory rent so once again i'm, I'm going to assume that we paid the rent with cash or a check therefore is cash affected yeah we're going to say cash is going to go down and so there's cash has a debit balance 
And we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. So I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to put that on the bottom. Right click and paste one, two, three. The amount's going to be for 20,000, negative 20,000 cash paid. We're going to debit something for 20. And again, you might be saying, well, we should debit rent expense. And again, we paid the rent, but it's on the factory. So the, the factory rent was not yet used to help generate revenue. Therefore, it can't be an expense under the matching principle. It needs to be included in the asset and expensed when the asset is sold because that is when it's used to generate revenue. So we're going to put it into factory overhead because we don't know which job to apply the rent to. Therefore, we're going to put it into factory overhead. So we're going to copy factory overhead and paste it one, two, three. Now, I just want, I was going to point this out. Notice that uh, if you were to look at this journal entry, you couldn't tell that uh, this was paid for rent. And if, you know, if it was a prior problem, we saw rent expense, we would say, oh, well, rent, that means it's paid for rent. But what if we dump it into factory overhead? We can't tell that. That's, that's why a lot of problems will actually say we didn't yet pay the rent, but we put, we, you know, we incurred rent. Then it would go into rent payable. And part of the part of the good thing about that type of problem is that you can see the rent payable tells you that the journal entry is for rent, but uh, it also is kind of confusing because we haven't, you know, usually we pay the rent with cash. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you see some problems that have a lot of payables in it, when you start working with the factory overhead, that's because they're trying to make the journal entry show you uh, what the journal entry is for, even though you can't really see it in the journal entry unless you had a description of it. All right, so we're going to post this out. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to scroll over here a tad. And then, so here's the factory overhead. Here's the factory overhead on the trial balance. Here's the factory overhead on the general ledger. We are scrolling down to U29 equals. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. I know I'm way down there. And there's that 20 and enter. And we can see that once again, we're still overdrawn, but now we're overdrawn by 333 and or over applied, I should say. And then we are over here on the cash. So here's the cash. Here's cash on the trial balance. Here's cash on the GL. We're on the credit side in R12 equals. We're going to point to that 20,000. That's going to bring the cash count down and put us back in balance. Okay, let's bring it up a little bit. Back to the taskbar. Back up to 100%. We are now on. We just did the 20. We are now on the last one of these. Depreciation on the factory. All right, so we know what our depreciation journal entry is. We usually debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. However, once again, uh, we're not going to debit the expense. Why? Because when we depreciated this, we used that uh, times of, of use on the equipment to help generate uh, an asset, not revenue. So the depreciation was not used to generate revenue. Therefore, it cannot be an expense under the matching principle, which is an accrual principle. It should be included as part of the assets, that asset being part of inventory. We don't know which job to post it to. Therefore, we're going to put it into factory overhead rather than work in process. So factory overhead, we're going to copy that. That's going to be another debit. Once again, to factory overhead, and we're going to credit the accumulated depreciation, just like we would if it was a normal uh, uh, depreciation transaction so i'm going to copy that and paste it here why because once again the building's on at this amount and we're going to increase the contra asset which will decrease the book value from in this case the 357 down by 30,000. so we're going to have the 30,000 debit and 30,000 credit all right i'm going to make this a bit smaller back down to 80 percent we're going to scroll over here a tad Here's the factory overhead on the journal entry. Here's the factory over. Here's the factory overhead on the trial balance. Here's the factory overhead on the general ledger. So notice all this stuff, this bucket of stuff we're dumping in the factory overhead because we don't know where job to put it into. We've already applied it out, but now we have the actual costs and expenses that we are putting in here. Equals, we're going to point to that 30,000 and enter. So now we're only overdrawn by three. So our estimate was pretty good. We estimated uh, 109 and uh, we're off by 3,000 in this case so that's not too bad and then we're on at the uh, accumulated depreciation here it is on the trial balance and it's our last asset over here on the general ledger as well so we are in z14 equals and we're going to point to that 30,000 and enter 
and and note there's nothing unusual about that side remember that that's related to the equipment so the the that means the accumulated depreciation went up book value then went down because the book value is this minus this debit minus the credit uh 327 327 thousand is how much the asset is on the books for at this time we're going to make this large again on the taskbar we're going to scroll over to the left and we're finally done with that overhead stuff we're going to go down to the trans uh, transfer of jobs from work in process to finished goods so at this point in time we have work in process here it's backed up by the job cost sheets the work in process by definition means that the work is uh, in process and not yet completed and at some point it will be completed hopefully and therefore it will then be transferred from uncompleted work in process to completed work in process and in this case we are transferring jobs 14 and 15 congratulations we have completed those jobs we're going to transfer the amounts in those jobs to uh finished goods so that is going to happen on uh 131 so 131 what's going to happen is finished goods is going to go up and work in process is going to go down we, we're going to have to look at the job sheets to see how much buy because what's ever in the job sheets that's what it's going to be the amounts that we're going to use so we're going to have the finished goods going to be debited though because it's an asset that's going up right click paste it one two three the work in process is going to go down it's an asset with a debit balance we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it which in this case is a credit and then the question is well how much and if we scroll down here we're looking for job 14 and job 15 so we're going to scroll over all the way over to our job sheets over here 